same rocks as the Sierra. And what happened millions of years ago, two plates separated. And that plate over there was the Pacific plate, this was the continental plate. And these rocks just kind of ended up in the middle here. Good morning. Heading back to the trail. Um, spent a couple of nights in Lone Pine. Pretty cool town. Uh, took care of some errands. Uh, fixed my hair. It's turning into like a bird's nest. So cut a lot of it off. Right now we're heading up Cottonwood Pass. The goal today is to get to uh, Chicken Spring Lake, which is like the first real alpine lake of the high Sierra. And we're going to spend the night up there. Speaking of, I'm actually packing out a six pack, so if we're going to be spending all day by a lake, might as well uh, live it up a little bit. Um, but the next big goal after getting back up to the trail, which is going to be a few miles, is going to be Mount Whitney, which is the tallest like peak in the lower 48s. It's like 14,505 feet. So that's going to be the day after tomorrow. Tonight, tomorrow, we're just kind of acclimating, heading to the base of the mountain. And then uh, it's pretty much a day hike up there and back. But that's going to be pretty exciting. I mean, it's off the trail a little bit, but most of the hikers do it. And I brought a little, a little something to celebrate when and if I get to the top, which I'll reveal once I'm up there. Like I said, I hit my goals, and my goal will be to get on top of Miss Whitney, if she consents, of course. Yep, right now, it's going to be a fairly, fairly easy day, just a few thousand feet of climb to the lake. Do the males look like tiny penises? What's up, dude? No, it's a female, and it's nursing. Well, it was quite a climb, but I finally made it to the cool, refreshing waters of Chicken Spring Lake. But it is all dried up this year. Oh well. Okay, JK. There is some water left here. Quite a bit of it, actually. Oh, wow. It's been a really low snow year, so I actually, um... I left my ice axe back in Lone uh, Pine. Yeah, this is going to be a uh, home for the night. Good morning. Um, really couldn't talk too much last night because of uh, the wind, as you could probably hear, even uh, inside the old tent here. But uh, yeah, yesterday we got to the lake. Pretty much just uh, got here early afternoon and just hung out and chatted all day. Uh, met up with some familiar faces, played some games, uh, like uh, subjective uh, 20 questions. It's pretty fun. Like someone would think the name of like a famous person or a fictional character, and you'd have to ask like subjective questions. Um, so you can ask like how old they were, but you could, um, you'd be like, but some, something I asked was, would I be surprised if this person had a hip replacement? So, do that, you can kind of infer, um, various things, so, yep, that was fun. Um, yeah, the plan is, it's going to be a pretty light day today. We're going to, uh, just do about 16, 17 miles to, uh, Crabtree Ranger Station, which is, like, at the base of Whitney, and we'll, uh, Set up camp there and head out early the next morning for Whitney. So, uh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, quite the early morning warm up. Getting out of that lake, we had to like go up one of those rock walls. I think. I'm in on the other side, kind of skirting along a ridge. So, 
yeah, that got the blood moving. I had to start doing like my breathing techniques like right away. Felt like I was gonna fall over at first, but just breathe harder and faster and deeper. Feel pretty good now. Kind of like a cruisy section right here. And there's only like a few hundred feet of elevation between here and the next water source. Uh, that's what I'm shooting for for lunch. It's about eight miles away, I would guess, right now. So, yeah. Feeling good. The trail is like really sandy for a while. And, uh, like, if you ever walked in sand, you kind of know how much extra energy it takes to walk across. So, different muscle groups and stuff can wear you out. The technique I've learned is to, instead of pushing off with my foot, like when I step down, I just uh, put the ball of my foot down and I use my trekking poles, my arms, to provide the forward push. So it kind of keeps me going at a steady pace and uses less uh, leg energy. My arms have actually gotten surprisingly strong since uh, being out here. I mean, you couldn't tell by looking at them, they're still being poles, but. Yeah, that's just uh, something I've been doing subconsciously for a while and just kind of realized now. Nice little golf course down there. Not really, but these meadows, they really remind me of golf courses. You ever play this old game, Sim Golf? <laughs> it's like one of my favorite games as a kid. Kind of weird, but yeah. Okay, finally have a bit of a windshield down here. Uh, yeah, I'm still a few miles away. Uh, it's been really easy going. It's all pretty much completely downhill to uh, the uh, Box Spring Creek. So, yeah, really super cruisy. Kind of just taking my time, enjoying the scenery. Oh man, just really nice out here. It's been in the desert for 700 miles. The sun's being directly on me, so it's a little warm, but it's still pretty cool out here. You know, I'm not sweating as much as I usually do. Just, uh, yeah, just putting in the miles and looking forward to Whitney tomorrow. So yeah, Whitney probably going to be the biggest challenge I've had so far. But, uh, it's like, when am I ever going to get a chance to do it again? Who knows when or if I'll ever be out here in the future. Um, so yeah, luckily I haven't had too much trouble with the altitude. So hopefully a few thousand more feet won't hurt. Just in case, though, at the gear store I bought this little portable oxygen tank thingy. It's kind of like the size of one of those, uh, big barbecue lighter thingies. Maybe smaller than that. Anyway, so it's like 95% pure oxygen. I mean, probably BS, like, I'm not sure how much it would help, but bigger. If I'm powering up a hill, it'd be a booster here, booster two here, and that kind of hurt. Um, we'll also basically be slack packing. We're gonna leave, uh, you know, tent, sleeping bag, and most of the non-essentials back at camp, so I'll pretty just be carrying the you know, water and some snacks, really. So, uh, it's kind of like you know, Dragon Ball Z, where they train in these chambers that increase Earth's gravity or whatever. So, after, uh, if not having, you know, 20 or 30 pounds on my back, Probably be a bit easier for the climb. I mean, there is like one section, like one one mile section that goes up like 2,000 feet. So it's going to be a challenge, but I think I'm up for it. I think I think that's what I've been training for, really, the past 700 and so miles. After over a month in the desert, this is 
certainly a nice sight. Looks delicious. So I stopped about a half an hour, no, half a mile early. Uh, came across this really nice spot. Um, I almost uh, passed this spot, um, but uh, Taco Cat and Jailbreak were here and uh, you know, called me over, said hi. It's really nice, little creek and stuff. So I figured I'd just fill up the water and have lunch here. Uh, been here a little over an hour. Haven't seen the rest of the group yet. Um, I think I'll stay here till 12, so about another half hour, and then I'll head out. There's a big climb coming up. I think we have to go over another pass to uh, get to the ranger station. Uh, yeah, maybe, I think it's like 2,000 feet or something, so. Yeah, just filling up double rations for lunch. Probably do uh, extra for dinner tonight, too. Get some calories for the climb tomorrow the Whitney. Um, so yeah, just uh, taking it easy. It's pretty cruisy. So I think the uh, the real climb, it's like this is gonna be like over almost like three times as much as it was this morning. So yep, looking forward to it. Okay, that was a pretty intense climb. Um, right out the gate, it was about a thousand foot ascent, and I went through these hills here. And then came up to this one. Um, that was like five or six hundred feet. So, still got a few miles to go and spaced out over that. It's maybe like another three or four hundred feet. So, whew. that was quite the workout. But uh, it's only 120 now. So, I think I did the hardest part in like the first hour or so, so it's uh, mostly downhill from here. So. Oh boy, that's uh, definitely a good warm up for tomorrow. So, officially splitting off from the PCT, head towards the Ranger Station and Mount Whitney. Yeah, there's still uh, little fishies in the water. Nature's toilet. <laughs> yeah, this actually kind of reminds me of a toilet from a Rick and Morty episode. Nerd reference. Okay, so made it to the campground. Um, it's about seven o'clock now. Got here around three o'clock. Uh, still no sign of the group yet. So not sure what happened. Um, yeah, I've kind of, uh, definitely kind of realized that I'm a, I'm a pretty strong hiker. Like, I was at that, uh, water source, you know, having lunch, just waiting around for a couple of hours. Between like 11 and 12, probably like over a dozen other hikers passed. And, um, I think when I eventually left at 12, I passed every single one of them on the way here. Even even the ones with an hour head start. So I'm not the uh, not the fastest. Kind of vary between maybe two or three point two miles an hour, depending on the gradient, but I think uh, the secret sauce is my stamina. Like it's like like for hours without stopping for a break. Um Elevation has been a bit tough, but since I've kind of learned how to work on my breathing, that's uh, that's helped a lot. There was a couple of times where my legs got a little bit wobbly, but you know, I actually took a hit of that uh, oxygen tank thingy, and that uh, actually—I mean, it might be a placebo effect, but it seemed to do the trick. You know, didn't have to stop. Just, kept going. So, 
Anyway, in a bit of a pickle here since the group hasn't showed up yet, so I don't know what's going on. If it's another Lone Pine situation, if they don't get here tonight, I'm not sure what that means for tomorrow. Like, I don't want to just, like, you know, leave and summon it myself if, uh, you know, it would be cool to, if it was like a group, you know, group thing. But anyway, that's a problem for tomorrow. There's still a little bit of daylight left. I mean, they've rolled in late before, so I'm thinking, um, I mean, I think we had originally talked about leaving around 5 a.m., but I mean, if we're not going for a sunrise or a sunset, like, I don't really see the point in leaving that early, especially if the plan is just to come back here and spend the night. I mean, we could pretty much leave a little bit later, which I think would be good. Be uh, warmer. Since uh, it's supposed to be pretty cold up there from what I've heard. Well, some of the people here have already summited. And uh, they said it was just windy and cold with their uh, summation. But, you know, also beautiful. So, I don't know. I just had a big dinner. Had some ramen, uh, sweet and sour pork in the bag, which was pretty awful. Um, <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty much just waiting around. I'm just gonna kind of hang out till it gets dark and bugs come out, and then I'll uh, turn in for the night and see what the situation is like tomorrow. I mean, especially if they roll in late, I don't see them wanting to leave really early. So, um, yeah, I am uh, looking forward to the challenge tomorrow. I mean, it's definitely going to be rough. I'm sure, like, I'll have trouble with it, but I definitely think I can make it in, like, a reasonable amount of time. I'm actually looking up at it right now. I think there's like two big peaks and from this angle it's a little hard to tell which one is which. I th think it's over there. But anyway, so yeah, just like a little, I don't know, I'm a little worried. Like, I mean, I know they had problems with the altitude before. Um, but if they're having issues, like, here, like, I'm not sure if it's a good idea for them to push it an extra 4,000 feet. But that's something I talked about with them. Just have to, uh, play by ear.